Hello everyone, um, welcome to our next episode. <clears throat> so in this episode I'm going to talk about uh, the envelope theorem. Um, well the reason why I wanted to do it is uh, rather than doing it in the math review is because I think it is the right spot for talking about envelope theorem and if you remember in the previous lecture we talked about indirect utility functions and so the idea of indirect utility function and the envelope theorem are basically uh, very very much related so let's talk about it and then I'm going to use the envelope theorem to prove what we call the Roy's identity. Okay so uh, the envelope theorem is basically about implicit functions, all right? So um, let's consider uh, the uh, one variable case, then later I'm going to talk about multi-variable case. So in, in, in very simple examples, suppose that I have a function f of x, which is equal to x squared minus c times x, where c is some fixed parameter, all right? So you may think of this as your utility function, where x is the choice variable, right? The how much good x you to consume. And C is just a constant parameter. It may not even actually be there, all right? So, uh, so if it is a constraint optimization, some parameter is going to kick into the X. But let's, let's keep this simple functional form. So what we normally do, uh, you know, what is the optimization problem is maximize f of x by choosing x. There is no constraint, all right? So how do we do that? Well, the first order condition is basically take the derivative with respect to x and set it equal to 0. So the derivative with respect to x is 2x minus c, set it equal to 0. So x is equal to c divided by 2, right? So we can put star here. Well, then I want to calculate the star value, the optimal value of, of, of f. All right, so let's call this f star, all right? So it is basically when I put the uh, 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 the optimal x into my function f. So it's going to be x squared, which is c over 2 squared, minus c times c over 2. So this is c over 2 minus c squared divided by 2. So this is c squared divided by 4, right? c squared divided by 4. So this is c squared minus 2. So what I have is basically <clears throat> minus c squared divided by 4. All right, so this is my optimal f function. Well, then the question is, for example, how my optimal f function changes with the value of a c parameter. Well, then I basically take its derivative and it's 2 to the c divided by 4, so it's minus c over 2. So, uh, my, my f variable, I'm sorry, my f parameter uh, is my f, I'm sorry, the value of the f function changes with the c parameter uh, with this relationship. And the way we found it uh, is, is exactly this. So if you remember the utility function framework, we didn't have c, but we had a constraint. And those constraint was kind of seeing the, uh, playing the same role that this c played. So we found the optimal x, y, and then we plugged them back to the utility function and calculated the indirect utility function. And then, um, you know, when we wanted to ask how the price of a good uh, influence the, uh, the the utility level of a consumer, we basically take the derivative of the you know the indirect utility function with respect to price or maybe income as you wish. All right. However, the envelope theorem basically says, well, you can actually skip. I mean, in this very simple example, it doesn't really make much difference. But actually, it says you can skip some of these steps. How so? So let me just be consistent with the notation. So. I want to know how my df star divided by dc is going to work, right? Yes. So this is, in fact, equal to del f divided by del c calculated on x is equal to x star c. All right, so that's basically the idea of uh, uh, envelope theorem. So it says, look, you want to know this, right? Uh, this is df star dc because the f star is just a function of c, all right? So it's not partial derivative. So you want to know how c is going to change the value of f star. But that basically means, remember the f star was calculated from f itself when we plugged the optimal x 
into an X, right? So let me uh, the, uh, let me say it again because that wasn't I, I think that wasn't so clear. So the F star was calculated from F when X was the optimal X, which is X star C. All right. So therefore, so this is the X star I mean. So therefore, when you calculate this partial derivative, the partial derivative of f with respect to c, and then calculate it at x equals x star, you should be getting exactly the same thing. All right, let's check. I mean, is this really true? Well, what is del f over del c? Well, it is, if you take the derivative of this guy, it is 2x minus c. Right? So what I want to do, I calculate del f del c when x is equal to x star, meaning it is equal to c over 2. So what is this? Well, you know, 2x minus c. So whenever x is equal to c over 2, it's 2c over 2 minus c, right? Uh, oops. Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, del f del c, when you take the partial derivative of this function with respect to c. This is a partial derivative with respect to x, all right? Don't make stupid mistakes like I do. So when you take the partial derivative of this guy with respect to c, I'm sorry for this, it's minus x, right? Because, yeah, because 2x squared is just, its derivative is zero with respect to x. I'm sorry. So that means when you calculate this, meaning when you evaluate and when you insert x star into x, you're going to get minus c over 2. Okay? I'm sorry for that uh, mix-up. But, so yes, they are exactly the same. Well, the thing is, the envelope theorem basically helps me skip this part. All right? So it says, you do not really need to calculate the uh, code and code indirect utility function, sort of. Right? You can definitely get the same result uh, from uh, uh, your, your objective function um, by, but obviously you have to find this optimal uh, solution for your objective function anyhow, all right? So this is the simple environment when we have one parameter. But let's suppose I have more than one parameter. No constraint though, okay? So I have, let's suppose, n parameters. So... Let's suppose the function is x1 all the way xn, and maybe there's a, a, another parameter a, uh, 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 the constant, all right? So, so let's call it c, okay? So the optimal is x1 star, remember x2 star all the way xn star, right? So therefore the f star is nothing but f of x1 star, x2 star, all the way to xn star, and then maybe c. Don't forget, c is a constant. We are not choosing c. It's like we are not choosing prices and income when we maximize utility. So they are fixed parameters. Well, here you're going to say in the utility function, there's no c, uh, right? I mean, the price and the income. Well, yes, they are coming from the constraints. So these are simple examples with no constraint. I will also talk about examples with constraint, okay? So here, when I want to do df star uh, divided by dc, so what does that mean? That means, so this is an implicit function. All those x1 star, x2 star will probably, I don't know, but will probably depend on c. So therefore, the implicit de 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 derivative uh, is, is going to be del f del x1, so you first take the partial derivative with respect to x1, then dx1 divided by dc, plus del f del x2 times dx2 divided by dc, all the way uh, del f del xn dxn divided by dc, and finally del f del c. All right? Okay, so I would like to so this is equal to this, but they all are calculated. Remember, x all do x1 all do xn equals x1 star xn star. I mean, whenever you see x1, you have to be plugging this optimal x1 star. 
uh, whenever you see x2, you have to be plugging x2 star, as we just did in, my, in, in the previous example. Okay, so what do we know? Well, consider this, del f del x1. Normally, I mean, not normally, del f del x1 is either positive or negative, I don't know. But the thing is, if you remember the first order conditions, right? The first order condition says, uh, the partial derivative of your function with respect to the first parameter, when it's calculated at the optimal point, must be zero, right? This is the necessary condition. And this is true not for x1, but also for x2. So when x is equal to x2 is equal to x2 star, all right? I mean, I'm sorry, it's not just x1, but um, it must be, you see what I mean? So x1, x2, all the way up to xn is equal to the x star, x1 star, x2 star, x3 star, etc. So therefore, these terms are all zero coming from the optimization problem. Because once again, those partial derivatives, when they're calculated at the optimal x, x1 star, x2 star, up to xn star, have to take zero values thanks to the first order conditions. So what does that mean? That means all these terms are zero except this. So therefore, df star divided by dc is nothing but take the partial derivative of the function, your, your, your initial function, and evaluate it at the point of x1 star, xn star. So exactly the same idea as the one variable case. Okay, same equality at least. Is that clear? Hope so. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the case where we have a constraint uh, 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 optimization problem. All right, it's coming up.